Welcome, everybody. This is How to English. Teach and learn with Gavin M. <laughs> It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. I don't know why you're laughing. That was funny. You, you said spice it up a bit. It's the last one of the year. <laughs> It was just really loud. Oh, <laughs> all, was like... I was trying to be enthusiastic. <laughs> It's the last one of the year. It is, and I can't believe an entire week has gone past of teachers' top tips number one, and we're already on teachers' top tips number two. Teachers' top tips two. Exactly. TTT two. <laughs> I've got all the tracks lined up, so all we literally have to do, M, is listen to them enjoy them and then it's all finished and that is the end this is the end m why are you being so dramatic it's the seasonal finale yeah all right but it's not the end end it's a small pause is it in an otherwise seamless continuity of podding it is it's like a, a ocean of knowledge flowing down into a river, a confluence of ideas that we're sharing and they're going through the pipes into the houses uh -huh. of... No, they're going through the sewage system. No, they're going through the water pipes and students and learners can drink from the fountain of knowledge. You and your metaphors. Wow, that's beautiful. So, yes, it is um, flowing... Everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Should we stop? <laughs> no. Well, if you want to keep going, I'm let's with you. Let's start. That would be oh, better. Right. Let's start okay. listening to other people. Now, That's a good idea. <laughs> so, remember, you can check out all of these teachers and learners at Instagram. Find their handles below in the show notes and um, check them out. They've got loads of really good resources. If you haven't heard last week... This week will still make sense, but I would recommend you go back and just check out some of the tips from there. Because they were just so good. They were just so good. They were fabulous. I'm going to use so many of those things in my teaching now. Yeah, I'm okay. definitely ruminating on all of them. M, we're going to start with Ali at Kaise72. Let's listen to Ali's tip. Hello, everybody. My name is Ali. I am an English teacher from Iran. I'm going to give you... Uh, some really good points for uh, learning English number one is find a speaking partner for yourself and uh, practice speaking at least 30 minutes a day and then and then you'll see how much you are improved in speaking uh, second one is uh, watch a TV show uh, I don't know, listen to something that uh, is in English every day, at least 20 minutes. Uh, in that way, your uh, listening skill uh, will be improved. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks, Ali. Absolutely agree. Um, find a partner. Great tip. Mm -hmm. And practice, practice, practice. Not mm -hmm. just speaking, but listening as well. Yeah, that's it. 30 minutes of just speaking time another half an hour or 20 minutes of listening time just make sure you schedule that into your day so you keep practicing really good general tips from Ali there yeah and that's not really that long is it in a day so that will really improve your English if you do that and next is Sarah hi guys I'm Sarah from at native English fast on Instagram and I love your podcast I'm an English teacher, but before I became a teacher, I trained to be an actor. So the tip I want to share with you today is from my days as a performer. This tip is for students and for teachers, and it can be used whenever you're doing something that makes you feel nervous. So before an exam or maybe before giving a presentation, I think you should try doing a power pose. So stand with your legs hip distance apart, stand up as tall as you can, Put your hands on your hips and open your chest wide and relax your shoulders. You need to hold this pose and take 10 deep breaths. 
This sends a message from your body to your brain that you're powerful, capable, and it should help to calm you down and help you feel more confident. Okay, bye guys. Thank you, Sarah. Love it. Power pose. Haven't tried it. I will definitely do that. I'm going to do it. As soon as we finish, I'm going to try a power pose. Or maybe we should have done that before we started. Yeah, that would have been useful. It would really. sound less sleepy. Mm, I like it. Thank you very much, Sarah. I like this. So power pose. So 10 deep breaths. I think that would really invigorate me and fill me with energy. So I'd be ready for an English lesson or for... I tell you what, this idea of rehearsing is really good because I say this to my students, before you make a telephone call, before you give a presentation, before you have a meeting, just go through in your mind or even say to yourself, you can sit in front of the mirror and just say to yourself, I need to do this. These are my aims. These are my goals. And that's it. You've practiced and you're ready. Mm, And that relates quite well to the acting side of life that is very true what we do all the time i think in some situations anyway and now we've got rena from we teach online hello everyone this is rena i've been working as an online english teacher for the past four years so gavin m have invited me to share a few quick learning and teaching tips with you then here they are First of all, if you are a teacher, I'm sure you've been overwhelmed by the amount of um, tutorials and tools available online, so it is important to explore them. However, sometimes less is more. Then also, I believe it is of paramount importance to cover feedback and personalization when it comes to delivering online lessons. And in order to do so, I've been using Google tools And two of them I would like to highlight are Google Docs and Google Jamboard, definitely. They've been helping me systematize my teaching delivery and the way students um, notice their learning progress as well. Now, when it comes to learning something online, especially if you take into account learning another language, I would definitely highlight the importance of note-taking by hand. I know there are lots of tools available. Some of them allow us to draw concept maps or mind maps. However, nothing replaces uh, note-taking by hand. And this is not only my opinion, uh, it's been proven by science and neuroscientists say that. Um, The thing is the cognitive process which takes place when you take notes by hand is completely different. So um, chances are, you will retain information better, you will internalize new vocabulary more easily and more smoothly as well. So that's it. Once again, thank you very much for having me and hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much and thank you for your support. You've always been a real inspiration for us, so thank you. I love your tips with Google Docs and Jamboard. So Jamboard is a whiteboard, it's a collaboration tool and this is so key. And as you said, this stuff can be a bit overwhelming. You've got all these tutorials and lessons. You're learning all the time. Just maybe reduce some of this stuff down. Find what works for you. Find how you can share your ideas with everybody. It was really interesting about the note-taking thing. I didn't know that. So I find myself, I definitely retain something if I write it down. Even just, you know, remembering things to do that day. If I write a list, then I will remember the the things better than if I didn't write them down. So that is a really good tip. Thank you very much. Now we've got Erin at Everything EFL Podcast. Here we go. Hi everyone, this is Erin from Everything EFL Podcast. Thank you, Gavin M, for giving me the chance to share my knowledge. So I would say never stop improving. So first of all, reflect um, what went right, what went wrong. Also, try new things and take risks. This is part of teaching. If it bombs, so what? You know, again, reflect what went right, what went wrong. Could be the activity itself, could just be the class that you did it with. Um, Thirdly, I would say lean on other teachers, especially the ones more experienced than you. They've got tons of ideas. Teaching is basically just stealing stuff from other teachers and adapting it for your own class. And I would say lastly, make connections on Instagram. There are so many amazing teachers out there um, and I'm sure they'll be delighted to help you. So 
they are my tips and thank you Gavin M for letting me be part of this and keep up the good work. Excellent tip Erin, I try and do that as much as possible, reflect on the lesson and not just for a teacher, I think students can do this too, just reflect what went right, what went wrong. It's so important to look back, not just, you know, forget it and move on, you've got to look back, definitely. Gav? That's exactly what we're doing right now. We're making connections. We're fostering relationships between learners and teachers and we're creating something amazing together. So thanks for that wonderful tip. Now we've got Mercedes at Bits and Pieces. My tip is always to prepare really, really well for the classes. Sometimes, especially at the beginning when you don't know your student really well, uh, it's um, very important to have lots of resources at hand. But what I always have is a game. It doesn't matter if it's a child or an adult, I always try to have um, something to play at. If the, um, if the class is face-to-face, -face, that would be like a board game. And if it's online, well, there are plenty out there. Um, I have Quizlets, you know, and, and I always try to make all the lessons, the, the vocabulary and stuff into Quizlet, um, into Quizlet games, really. And that's it. I am a teacher much like Mercedes. I, I do the same. I like to prepare and it makes me feel confident with lots of resources in my bag. You know, you might not need them, but it's really, really nice just to have them there if, if it doesn't work out the way you expect it to. So yeah, Mercedes, I do the same thing as well. And a game, definitely, not just for children. It's, um, it's fun for everyone. And it's it's such a good way of learning. Yeah, always have a game up your sleeve. I think we need to do an episode about games, actually. I think that could be very interesting to discuss. Mercedes has inspired me to do a bit more research into games. That's it. That's something for the new season. That is. Ooh. I like that. Yeah. Exciting. OK. Who's the next one? Now we've got our old friend, Andy. Andy? Yeah. Oh, wow. Andy from Parlour Language Room. Hey. Hi there. Andy Dow here from Parlour Language. Here's a nice tip for my friends, colleagues at How To English. I think when we're starting, I remember when I started back in 1542, um, everything was daunting and I felt a bit insecure. I felt inadequate because it's true. You know, I was a native speaker. I, I understood the grammar. I just didn't know I knew it. So when I was doing my shelter and they said, well, the present perfect continuous is, I thought, golly, what's the present perfect continuous? But then I realized, ah, that's just when you say I've been doing this for 20 years. So sometimes we feel a bit insecure going into a classroom with students who might know the terminology better than we do. We just need some time to get our head around what things are called in English grammatically. Tip number one. Something that's helped me over the years, and it's been over 20, start your first class on a high. I think first class, um, we generally go through or go around the room. Hi, what's your name? How long have you been studying English? My name's Bob. My name's Peter. And each person gives a kind of monologue, and it just kind of kills the dynamics. Keep it fast. Keep it fun. Make each student ask each other questions. Um, get them to introduce each other, if you know you. Uh, one another, hit questions of them. So if there's three of them, your Bob will ask Mark why he's here. Get them sort of playing with each other linguistically and don't kind of go around each one asking dull questions. Keep it on a high note and that will set the scene for future positive classes. OK? Yes, don't be daunted by the language. And if you're not familiar with all the grammar phrases, don't worry. I think that is something that comes over time and you can't make that fast faster than it naturally happens yeah. anyway. That's it. Just dig into your mind. You probably already know these sentences, these expressions. Yeah. You already know the grammar. It's just learning the terminology. And this is for all teachers. Yeah, and the students had to learn it too. So, you know, it is a learning process. So I was a bit worried about that at the beginning. Um, I love the start on a high thing. I actually thought he meant start on a high, like, hi, my name is, but he meant high, like, high note, like a, 
a thing that's exciting. And that energy is really important. I, I totally agree that don't just go round the room, you know, boringly introducing yourselves. Um, make it fun. Yeah, I definitely agree. Make it fun. Okay. What's next, Gav? Now we've got Dan and Mari at English Unite. Hello, everyone. This is Mari. And Dan from English Unite. We're here today to share our top tips for learning English. My number one tip today is about speaking. Try and find a community to practice English with. If you don't have friends or family who speak English, find other learners online on platforms such as Instagram or Facebook. Talk to them and see if they would like to be your speaking partner. English is a social thing. You are not supposed to learn it by yourself. Learn it in a group and it will be more meaningful, effective and fun. And my number one tip today is about learning new vocabulary. Focus on the topics that you want to improve on. Don't try and learn words from different subjects at the same time. For this, you will need to have specific goals in mind. For example, if you're learning English to work as a graphic designer, focus on words about this area. Most importantly, don't only learn just single words. Learn phrases with those words. Learning phrases is a great way to increase your fluency faster. We hope these tips will help you in the future. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. Yes, thanks, Maori and Dan. I think they were both very good tips. And Maori, I agree with you. It is a social thing. You can't do it alone. Otherwise, you're just sort of talking to yourself or you're not speaking at all. So practice that English as much as you can. And Dan, absolutely, in context, is so important. You can't just have these words isolated, you know, in list form. I mm -hmm. think you need to use them in the sense that you would in life yeah so create a community and learn words in context and expressions as dan said now we've got ro at eng for brazilians hi this is teacher ro from english for brazilians i've been a private esl tutor for brazilians for the last four years and i teach on average 60 classes a week so I want to share with you a common mistake most of my Brazilian students make. The confusion between the verb have and there be. In Portuguese, we use the verb have, ter, for everything. And that's why it's so difficult to correct this mistake. One tip I share with them is the verb have shows possession. For example, they have a car. And there be means to exist. For example, there is a car in front of the house. In class, I joke with my students that I will change the way they think in Portuguese so they can improve their English. For more great tips, follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Search for at ang4br. Ang number 4br. Was that 16 or 60? Uh, she, said, she said 60. And I did actually write to her and she confirmed it was 60. What? Even if that's 60, 45 minutes, that's a heavy workload. Oh, I don't see how that's possible. Wow. wow. Her tip was fabulous. If you do know the student's first language, use that to your advantage. There are so many little tips and tricks to help the mechanics of the language to work together. Absolutely. That is a very good tip. And change the way you think is so interesting. That is a very um, difficult to do, but important part of English, I think. You have to start thinking differently. Mm. You can't apply the rules of your own language always. And some of my students get very frustrated because, oh, it's not like that in my language, but you got to let that go. You just can't have everything the same. It's That's not it. possible. Stop translating and start yeah. thinking in English. You're right. Or whichever language you're learning. Now we've got Rosanna Spreadjoy. Nice name. So this is Rosanna Spreadjoy's tip. We're going to read this one. Uh, she says, keep a journal and make annotations of new words. Challenge yourself to use them in your daily life at least twice or more a week until you feel you own the new word. The more you use it in simple sentences and in daily life, the better the progress. 
Absolutely. I love that. Until you own yeah. the word. Use it till you own it. Until such, it's yours. Such a good one. It's we good. should definitely use that in our teaching. Like, use it till you own it. Uh-huh. I often say this to students when they ask me, how can I learn these new words? How can I keep them in my mind? And I say, you need to keep working on it. But one day, you will just start using this grammar, these new words. It's so exciting. And it's a feeling, I think, that you do get when you learn a language. It is something that goes from this unknown to this familiar. And that is a very interesting part of your brain that does that. And you can't explain it. You can't somehow do it without, you know, you can't plan it. It's just, it happens quite organically, I think. And suddenly it's just part of your vocabulary and you you can use it naturally. Yeah. And now Vicky Loras. Hi, everyone. I'm Vicky Loras. I'm Canadian with Greek roots. I'm an English teacher and uh, the last 11 years I've been teaching in Switzerland. Um, My tip of the day would be, uh, I tell my students that they can learn from everywhere, from songs, from videos, from things they like. Uh, And it doesn't matter, for example, if they're business English students and they don't have to listen to or read business English things all the time, they can learn from everywhere. So they can watch videos that they like uh, on topics that they like, like cooking or sports. They can build on their prepositions. They can build on their vocabulary in general, and they can get the business English from other places. Uh, Just as an example, I'm also a language learner. And because I like cooking a lot and books, I watch videos in German about these topics and it helps me a lot. Absolutely anywhere. That is the lovely nature of English. It is everywhere and it is in so many forms. So if you want to watch, I don't know, British royal family, watch The Crown. If you want to watch a load of people in America talking about their love lives and problems, watch Friends. It's just there's an infinite amount of things out there and you can always find something that you enjoy. And these tips are not only for English learners, whatever language you're learning. These are some great tips for you. Yeah, you can just go to whatever entertainment there is in that. I'm not sure if there's a German friends. No, I was just, you know, thinking of English. But you're right. I mean, there must be an equivalent. Every country's got an equivalent of friends, I'm sure. Yeah. Here's Alina at Engbang. E-N-G bang. Engbang. Nice name. Hello, everyone who's listening to this podcast. Hello, Gavin M. My name is Alina and I'm a part of the Engbang project. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity to participate in your podcast. That is much appreciated. So I'm going to quickly share with you my simple secret on how to gain confidence in your English skills. So the idea is simple. Uh, Try to switch to English next time you use your social media account. You can just use your existing one or you can create a new one. But just try to use English while you are on there and see where it can lead you. If you do, please let me know. You can find my Instagram page the.eng.bng and yeah, hope you will enjoy it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. See you. It's just something you do all the time every day and without thinking about it, you just naturally get on your phone so if that phone is in english it's going to have a massive impact on your progress and if you're following people who are posting in english if these are your favorite actors movie stars opera singers whatever it is you're following it'll all be in english as alina said make it a habit it's something you do all the time you're always picking up your phone you're always checking your messages you're always on the social network do it now just do it now like pause us now and just set your phone because you're gonna just say oh yeah that's a good idea i'll do it later but don't do it now and here are some kind words and top tips from live and learn podcast with ina and yulia Hi, hello. Thank you for the opportunity to share what we think. Well, we believe the community around your podcast includes experienced and knowledgeable professionals who can share a vast spectrum of tips. So we chose to share the tips aligned with our vision and mission that we have in Live and Learn podcast. And that's Live and Learn. Be curious and keep on learning with your students and from your students. Be sincerely present. Live every moment of teaching as unique experience of being together with your students 
co-present, co-creating educational environment, live, learn, discover, teach, be present, live and learn. Oh, that's wonderful. I really love the idea that the student learns from the teacher, not only language, but about their culture, about their interests, about what motivates them. And the teacher can do likewise, learn about the student's culture, learn about their interests, just as she said, be a co-worker living and learning together. That was just a lovely use of prepositions. Learn from and with your students. I love that. And be present. It's so important to be present. Just enjoy it. Just the lovely idea that, you know, you, you're just enjoying the moment. Yeah. And now we've got Michael at Canary Island English. It's an obvious piece of advice nowadays, maybe. But one tip I give students at every level is to think less about individual words and much more about whole phrases. When you buy a new chair or a laptop, for example, you don't need to understand every single part in order to use it correctly. And English is exactly the same. Take a phrase like, it's a figment of your imagination. You don't need to understand what a figment is. Instead, think of the whole phrase as a prefabricated chunk. And we know the phrase just means that you're imagining something that isn't real. Um, it's also really helpful to learn frames such as I could do with or what I like about is, for example. There's no reason you can't start this at even the lowest levels of language learning. In fact, for students, the earlier you start, the better. And if you're a teacher, my advice would be don't just think about grammar in terms of tenses, but also the grammar words have and the patterns we can make by putting them together. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I think it is obvious, but it's a really important one that everyone should learn whole phrases. And what you did was perfect because you, you used examples and it's so important to give examples and to explain in a way that is understandable. So I love that explanation as well. And yeah, not just tenses for teachers. It isn't just about a formula that makes the language. It is about these chunks and the sound of those chunks and making sure that students recognise that and not just, you know, separate all the words. Top tip. Yeah, don't be too analytical. Just, mm. as you say, learn these chunks. It reminds me about when I learn a language and I just learn set phrases. This is a really, really good tip. Thanks, Michael. Now we've got Mohsen Sabatmand. To be a successful language learner, one undoubtedly is required to enjoy their acquisition process. To do so, it's absolutely crucial to realize what interests them most. For instance, those who enjoy listening to music could use this very feature to enhance their language learning process, finding themselves a favorite singer. Or the ones who fancy watching movies and series could simply use this hobby and put it into practice. All in all, what matters most in acquiring a skill like a foreign language is having entertaining exposure to it. I myself am mad about gaming and I've been doing it since I was 8 years old. Now I'm 28 and I can tell you in my eyes it has made a great deal of enhancement in my language learning process. Do what you fancy and learn the language while you're enjoying it. Yes, that's my motto. Thank you Mohsin. Yes, use your hobbies. Do what you fancy and enjoy it. Enjoy the process. It is so important. Okay, good. M. now it's English with Amira. Hey, good morning, Augustine, and good morning, everyone. Sorry for being late to record this uh, short audio, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. So, the audio, it will be about how to learn English quickly. Here, I will give six uh, important tips for learners to practice uh, in the way of learning English quickly. The first one, it was... Um, it's about read everything you can't get your hands on. For example, you are in the kitchen. Try to, to, to name everything you face in English, not in your native language. Number two, take everyday notes of new vocabulary. Talk with native speakers. They will help you a lot. And subscribe to podcasts or YouTube channels and sure in English and try to follow the podcast of uh, Gabby Rustin. They are so helpful 
uh, use your friends to practice your English every day and don't kick yourself while you are down. When you start to feel like you are not making ground, which happens to all learners at some point, don't say I don't speak English or I never get this. Thank you so much and uh, I hope these tips will be helpful and useful for you. See you. Very, very useful. Very useful and very helpful. And Amira sounded like she was actually in a school or somewhere at the time. So, wow, doesn't get more real than that. Um, her first tip about, you know, if you're in a room, just look around the room. Think about what all the things are. Do you know the word? And I recommend this because my student um, the other day said that he went to a very famous furniture shop and he was walking through the furniture shop thinking about all the words and if he knew them in English and he made a list of the ones he didn't know and then he asked me what they were and oh, it wonderful. was just brilliant. Really agree. That's a great tip. Thank you for the support. Yeah, really good. I, I like about talking to friends. So even if your friends speak the same language as you, say to them, OK, for the next 20 minutes, we're only going to speak English. It's such a good tip. Definitely. I really love it. And don't feel bad if you're not making that progress or if you have a bad day. That is a, such a good point to make that you're going to have a bad day and it's not always going to be easy. But don't be despondent and don't give up. And as she said, don't say, I can't speak English. It's not true. It's just not true. OK, so from Amira to Sahar at etook.english. Hello, listeners, and thank you, Gavin M., for inviting me to contribute to your very useful podcast. The tip that I want to share with you today is hopefully practical for both teachers and learners, and it is stop scratching the surface and dive deeper. What I mean here is the number of books that the learners study or the number of movies that they watch or anything else that they do to improve their English can be kind of important. But what is much more important and the key to make progress is the amount of time that they spend to dive into it, to feel it and to engage with it. Uh, without that, even with a tremendous amount of very useful material, there's no hope to go anywhere in the language learning journey. Thank you, Saha. So, yes, deep learning. We subscribe to this learn every day, just a little bit, pick up your phone, do a little activity, read something. But also deep learning is really, really important. You need to get to that meaningful level where you really are absorbing the language. You're learning something new. And once you've got something, then go out and practice it in whatever way you can. I think that that deep dive really makes it memorable. I think in my own experience, not just of languages, but of learning anything, if I've done it in depth and I've really studied something and that process really helps you remember it. So mm. I think there's, there is space for that, you know, doing lots of things as well. Mm -hmm. um, but every now and again, it's worth just getting really deep into something. Absolutely. Finally, we've got Wanda. Finally. I know. Oh, now I'm, I'm getting sad. Well, it's okay because it's a long one, so you're going to enjoy this. Oh, okay. And I know Wanda. Thank you, Wanda. Yeah, really excited about this one. So, yeah, this is Wanda at Wa Workshops. Hi, I'm Wanda Atkins. Um, the way that I would teach, I would say, would really be the energy that you put into it is the energy you're going to get out of it. So each student needs to know that once they're in the room or in the place, um, that it's a place that they can feel safe, number one, and uh, together you guys can decide on what rules are supposed to be happening there. For me, for example, it's Vegas. Whatever happens in that room stays in that room. Just for people to know that you're, you're there for them and the energy that you're giving them, they will give it back to you. Um, while teaching, sometimes I use everything that's in the room to help get the point across. It's not necessarily using worksheets um, because I'm an unplugged teacher. I can take a chair and use the chair to explain the past, present, and future. And for some people, it's easier for them to understand. You have to be able to define what type of learner that you have in front of you because some methods don't work as, as well as others. It's also um, good to remember to, if you have a certain type of personality, your teaching is going to be different, so your students will react differently also. So sometimes if you're a personality who's very gregarious, uh, it's true that for some students that aren't gregarious, that might be uh, a challenge for them, but it's also good because they learn something new. As long as the student knows that it's an exchange and not just you teaching, 
um, that's where there's a, a relationship is being built in. So from there, it's easier to adapt to the situation. It's also good to remember to put yourself in um, your student's shoes to know what it feels like when you feel frustrated, when you don't understand something, um, and also, you know, the moods that they have. There's a lot of things to, to think about when you're teaching um, someone. There's cultural differences. There's a lot of things. I usually like to start off um, by someone coming in with their idea of what they would like to do, but something that they like doing. Once you do that, um, they can explain, they can present it, they can explain it, and that they can put onto any type of function that they might use English for later. Tips for learning. Um, there's really so many different ways using mind maps. Um, we know the usual ones. We always talk about watching movies and listening to YouTube and things like that. But um, it's really to have the language enter their lives in different ways. They can put post-its in their kitchen on different items um, in a way that it turns into a game almost where they're discovering different parts of the language in different parts of their houses, for example. Um, it's, it's like being a child again. Um, try to find new ways so that for them it's, it's also a way of rediscovering or discovering English. And create, create, create. Try to do maybe a group project together because that's another way of putting people in different positions of responsibility. They will take it more seriously, but also they can add their creative juices to it. So that would be another tip of, of learning. Hope this helps. Thanks, you guys, for asking me. Bye. What a great one to end on. That was amazing. So, so many, so many good tips there, Wanda. Thank you so much. I personally would love to know how you teach tenses with a chair. Yeah, I'm so curious. <laughs> I'm thinking like, wow, yeah, that, that is really interesting. Uh, I loved uh, the idea of creating a safe space where everyone feels comfortable and making sure that you know there's that exchange there and it's not just all one way that's it make it a meaningful exchange between all of the people present and it is a confidential safe space yeah what's what happens in vegas or in the classroom stays in the classroom <laughs> and that point about you know personalities it's such an important one you know, we are different and we're not always going to click with people and you might have to adapt. So I think as a teacher, it's really important to be aware of that. You might not do something the way you would with someone else. So think about that and think about the student and put yourself in their shoes, as she said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Great tip. Yeah. For some people, that will be very difficult because they're returning to a place where they are not able to communicate. Mm. And that's very difficult for some people. So you have to take mm. that into account. Yeah. And in a learning environment as well, that could bring back a lot of, you know, memories of school and things like that. Yeah. And that create tip was another really good one. Um, team building in a way, you know, coming together to do something makes it memorable and makes it fun as well mm -hmm. in a creative way. Yeah. There's lots of discovery. There's inspiration. And whether you're the teacher or the learner, bring that energy to the classroom. Yeah. I thought all of those recordings were just such a wonderful collection and I'm so happy to have them all collated together and I think it's just something that I will go back to and I will remind myself and listen to for inspiration. These are absolutely top tips. These are top tips from top teachers and learners and I'm so happy that we were able to put them together for the listeners to hear today at what I must Admit M is the final minute Aww. of teach and learn. No, what's it called? That's it. How to English. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that perfect? How to English, teach and learn with Gav and M. Please, we encourage you to have a look at the show notes. You can find all of these top teachers and learners in the show notes. And you can see their content on Instagram. And the episodes are available in audio and transcription form. So please check that out. And don't worry, we will be back next year. We're just having a couple of weeks break. So tune in again or pod in again next year check us out in january we will be back so we've got some really good ideas for next year and we're very excited to continue it's been amazing it's been a fantastic year yes should we do our final high five of the season sure ready one two three 
<laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, Em, I forgot. What? I was going to tell you, um, you remember we have that competition going on? Mm-hmm. Between the nations which are following us? Well, it wasn't really a competition. I think you made it one in your own head, but go on, yeah. Well, we have a winner. Oh, What's the prize? Well, we have a winner, but sadly there is no prize except a sense of pride. Right. Number eight is Germany. Number seven, Poland. Number six, Russia. Number five, Brazil. Number four, the United Kingdom. Number three, Spain. Number two is the Czech Republic. And the new winner for the final episode of the season is the United States. Congratulations to them and well done to everybody listening and reading all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, Gav. Thank you, everyone. And please keep following for next year. We're very excited to continue. Yes, we'll be back. We will. See ya. Bye.